Welcome to Spotlight. It's Monday and we're discussing current affairs. My name is Nuong Falong. In focus today is the Asawasi constituency. And who better to speak to the issues than the member of parliament of Asawasi? He's also the minority chief whip, Alhaji Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak. We're going to be looking at security concerns within the constituency moving into election 2020. When we come back, I'll introduce you to the minority chief whip. Stay with us. No, this is not business as usual. This is a different kind of business. From the global stock market, to our central bank, to insights on insurance and investment, Spotlight is a show for you. Here, we look beyond the numbers. On Spotlight, we'll tell you the complexity behind the figures. On Spotlight, we examine hardcore financial issues. Join me, Philip Nanfuri, on MX24, together with policymakers and experts, as we talk business. Opinions are like onions. Everybody has one. A person is a no-no. As a human being, you must take responsibility for all your actions and inactions. Your misjudgment shouldn't be enough grounds to take a life. No, 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 no. I disagree with you because look, if you do not legalize it, people will go to crack doctors anyway who might end up not just kill the baby but the mother as well. Why should I waste my time joining a long queue under the hot sun to vote for your political party knowing very well that nothing would be achieved at the end of the day? Something will be achieved. It's a civic responsibility to turn out to vote. Vote and vote for a good leader. Governments need to cater to every graduate, diversify the economy, invest in other sectors. But the government cannot do it all. That is why we need the youth to take up the mantle and set up their own businesses. That is how we we'll create economic viability. Here on Opposing Views, we take your views, my views and the views of the experts and put them in the right context for you, our discerning viewers. Welcome back. You're still watching Spotlight on MX24. We're discussing the Asawasi constituency, quite a hot spot during elections. We have Member of Parliament and Minority Chief Whip discussing these issues with us, and he is Al Haji Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak. Welcome to Spotlight. Thank you very much. What is it like being Chief Whip? Oh. <laughs> We need a whole day to discuss that. I mean, Give us in, a summary. In summary, the chief whip is like the, the engine of a car. Mm. You, you see the, the body polish does the leader. Mm. But really what runs the car is the engine that you don't okay. see much of. The chief whip is supposed to be very grounded in rules. He's supposed to be the chief disciplinarian. He determines where you sit in the chamber. He proposes which committee you serve. If you, for any reason, you cannot be in the house, you have to send your leave of absence to him, and he decides whether your reasons can be accepted or not and recommend it to speaker. So it's a whole so lot like of So like a things. class uh, prefect? More or less. So a lot I mean, of, yes. so seems like a lot a, of work. It's a lot of work. I mean, it requires a lot of courage. It requires a lot of firmness. I mean, you need to be fair and equitable. And you have to be just, even if somebody that has proven to be very rude to you deserves mm. something, you still have to give him. Mm. If your best friend is wrong, you need to have the courage to say, look, you are wrong, and therefore you have to take this punishment. It's not easy. I mean, remember, there are also colleagues, and some of them actually are even your senior colleagues in the house. I mean, ah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serving uh, my fourth term, and I have people like Honorable Collins' daughter who are serving their sixth term. And they're taking sanctions from you. Mm. So you, you have to mix it with a lot of humility and show great respect so that it will be easy to do it. So it's, 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 it's not an easy job, but I mean, thank you, God, you this, is my eighth year. this is my eighth year. 
as chief rep. And I must say, I enjoy doing it, even though I know it comes with a lot of difficulties. Honorable, you mentioned chief disciplinarian. Mm. Is there discipline in Osawasi? Well, that, that's, that's very difficult to determine. I mean, depending on what issues there is. I mean, mm. if it comes to our day-to-day -day life, I will tell you that every member of that community listens to somebody. Okay. So if you want to get things done, depending on whether it's in Asakura Mampon or it's in Ababo or it's in New Zongo or Akutia Line, you need to get to know who to talk to and it will be easy for you. If you decide to go and do it your own way and uh, you step on the wrong toes, then you think that it's a very chaotic uh, community. But I can tell you, it's a very well-organized community. All you need to know is to know how to approach it and you imagine, ah, is it as one as it? I mean, there's this perception. So you're saying it depends on the approach? It depends on the approach. Eleven young men were arrested recently by the police, picked up, essentially. You did not agree with the actions of the police. Yeah, definitely. What was your major grounds? My, my, my grounds, I mean, are solidly grounded on the activities during the recession exercise mm -hmm. and how the police are proving to be very partial. I mean, they have effectively maltreated us during the recession exercise. Almost every complaint. What, what makes you think they maltreated you? Yeah, you, you? you have anti-robbery units. That's, look at the name. And they are used heavily during the recession exercise. And you ask, what has the recession got to do with armed robbery? And but then they're they only come, used they, in Aswansi. No, and it's wrong. Whether it was used in Aswansi or Tamale or Volta region or where, that's not their mandate. And the way and the brutality with which they carry their operations is what makes it very offensive and, I mean, virtually humiliating. You have your agent in, I mean, let me just cite two examples. In our chair line, then all of a sudden, these heavily bald guys drop from police pickup, no uniform, wielding guns, and then they just come. They just ask. Was the that MVP. what happened? Yeah. And, I'm just, and the records are there. Just ask them, where are they? And say, they are there. Then you just arrest them. What is it? Nobody should come near. And they cock the guns. And then they take the three agents. We follow up. What they, oh, we are told that they are holding foreign material at the resistance. Is it for you to determine that? Oh, no. We have to get clarity from the letter commission before. And this was in the afternoon. And they had to pass the night there. We did everything. You know, they wrote to the letter commission. I said, no, we are encouraging this. Because what they were holding was a sheet. That encourage people to, they will write your name, assist you to write your name and your address. So when you get to the registration officer, it becomes faster. And they used to say, oh, we are ourselves we are encouraging people to do this by downloading our forms so that it will be easier when you get to the district. So now they release them. You make the same complaint about some other activities where people virtu I mean, virtually come to tell the registration officers that only one person should write names when there are people in the queue. Mm -hmm. And you have the office, police officers there, oh, can you talk? I mean, and secondly, I mean, in Kumaka, where they were registering students, and now uh, agent noticed that they were bringing up minors. They tried to challenge. They called, they came, no question. They just pick our agents, and we go, oh, we were told that they were disturbing. But these are our agents. Did you even stand to observe what is happening? You just came and picked them. This is wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, take their statement. But, but the police were there throughout the process. Didn't they observe the situation and, and before? Then that's exactly what I keep saying. And the officers who are there get shocked. So who called them? Who called them? And Maybe this, they well, observed some activity. No, what well, I'm saying that the police officers stationed there will be asking you, ah, but who called these people? Because it's a police mm -hmm. officer there who must call and say that, look, I need a backup because there's some disturbances happening okay. here. And you don't have that. And I can tell you, what happened recently was most shameful. They are trying to save face by, I mean, they came to swoop in my office. And it's surprising that you, you, you call my office a hideout. What if they were conducting certain investigation? Because they claim this was part well, of an investigation. That's why I'm saying that it's a face saving. You come to my office, we'll be able to return for my rally, a mini rally in the park also. And then that evening, I told them that no, I was not. I was so tired because it was a Saturday. I was not going to be able to do the nights. Yeah, so they should go. I'll go and take some rest because I was having some mild headache. So I left them. No, I will come back to the office, take our our, our dinner, and then we'll prepare and leave for the night uh, activities. 
Then my chairman calls me, there's this gunshot at the back. I mean, that seems like, like a war kind of war zone. What, what's happening? So, ah, some, some guys have come, that they are police officers. Well, if they claim they are police officers, let them show ID card. Who dare you ask them their ID card? They are not in uniform, they are holding guns. They collected this young man. I tried that night reaching out all the commanders. Finally, in the morning, I got the now commander, he's not away. I called the division commander, he's not away. I mean, how can you not be aware of such thing? Then later, I go, oh, it is a two IC, said he, they were chasing some armed robber, and they are told, I mean, the person has passed that end. So, I mean, as to be less assured, if you go and the person is not among them, they, they will be released. So we, so we went there. The first video they brought about a gentleman who had just cross carpeted from MPP and joined us about a year ago. This is a known informant to the police in the community. This is a very responsible person. He has two wives, two houses. He has tenants in his house. He's an electrician. Everybody knows in the community. I mean, and he's been working with MPP for years. All of a sudden, so you do this not is, trust this. Case I do not. Again. And I keep saying that. Look, we have the Zongo 7, where they shot and killed seven of our young men. We insisted, I made a statement, I pushed an independent committee to set up, chaired by a high court that came out that they were not armed robbers, but they were shot and killed, displayed now, their that was dead an body. Unfortunate incident, which was not only over, and I'm saying that 12 of our young men have been shot dead in this same manner, in the name of armed robbery. At least these seven, when an independent committee was set up, it was proven that they were not. But they were not only humiliated before death, they were humiliated even in death because their dead bodies were lined up with some fake guns that they, that were what they were they were holding. The committee was able to prove that all these things were wrong. Oh, to date, we've that. not had justice. And I'm saying that fine, you send the gentleman to court. I mean, that's good because they held him for over 48 hours. The thing is in court, we are law abiding citizens, so we pick the necessary legal team to support him. We are very sure. I'm very hopeful that, I mean, this is no, they can't, you can't prove what is not there. And some of them were released. That's, a, well, that's um, exactly what I'm saying. But this young man, we know, I mean, since the day he joined us, his friends that he was there with had been threatening him with one comment or another. And I can give you one example. During the session exercise, they went and reported to uh, Asukaman Police that he was carrying part, uh, MPP party panoplia and they won their things. <laughs> This is the first time I'm hearing this in, in this country that somebody crosses and said, oh, you, uh, I gave you some t-shirts, so bring it back. So I, I asked him, what else are you holding? So oh, apart from ID card, I said, go and hand over the ID card to them. So my chairman took him, made his statement. And every day he comes to me and says, look, honorable, this is what I've heard, that they are saying that I will see. I mean, I, will, I, 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 will, I won't vote home. I said, look, let's keep doing what is right. Whilst we are within the law, nobody can do anything to you. So, and then all of a sudden, the that very night that they were arrested, they came to do some rituals, the entrance to, that leads to my office. In the morning, who did, we don't know. They called me and I said, look, I don't believe in these things. Just find some urine and find some paint and paint it. And please, let it, let it, don't make it be an issue. It's not worth wasting our time and energy on. Whilst they were doing this, they had confrontation with one of the young guys who is also known MPP, and said, that we'll see today what will happen to you. And the evening, you get them arrested and tell me that it's not political. So you I said that your actions, political it is action? not what the commanders or the regional commander says. It is his action. But the police doesn't work for the, the MPP youth who I've told you them. the number of times that they've made arrests under the virtually guise of being called by the MPP. And I've told you the number of times we have made complaints, written letters to even IGP, not even the courtesy to respond. As a member of parliament, you can't run your country like that. If I write to you, with the gator, let's say all the things that are put there are stupidity, at least acknowledge receipt. No, and I'm you tell me that what they, their actions are not political. No. When you say their actions are political, yeah. that's quite a dangerous accusation, which borders on suppression. Are you accusing them yes. of suppression? I've said the time without number. All the attempt is to intimidate her. We are not going to be intimidated. Why would they want to be intimidated? Yes, because, you? I mean, if you hear the Rina chairman of MPP tells you that, we are taking this seat at all costs. But you know, it is, you, you can only take a seat through vote. Me, this seat, well, I, wasn't, I didn't inherit it from my father. 
I didn't inherit it from my brother. I am saying you have been very outspoken about suppression, as you call it. Uh, and then some boys go and storm the police station. Were they acting on your orders? No, I mean, like I told you that day, I was not even there. And I condemned that too publicly. I said, look, two wrongs will not make a right. Having the feeling that, look, you are exhausted almost every avenue to get the right things done and not being done does not give you the right to also misbehave. And I've said this to the Reno because commander. Because they were mentioning you, you watch the video. Uh, and I've, I've said it publicly on radio, and I condemn everyone. And, I mean, God is my witness. All the, the and one of the guys that was in the video visibly, to date, he can't come to my office. You will not believe it, but to date, he can't come to my office. I was mad. So you I condemn thought, the actions I, of I've these? I have condemned, and I said, that, look, I have consented to them. The only way we will stand victorious it's even when they are abusing us. Let's keep mentioning the abuse, but we should stay within the law. That's the only way that the world will see the difference. But if we begin to say that, oh, because they are acting, I mean, unlawfully, we should also act unlawfully, then we are like them. Let us control, let's keep our actions lawful so that they we keep pointing out the unlawful actions. That's the only way that people so will, will know that we are were not acting according to your act commands. They, they, act they acted day. independently. Yeah, obviously, because that night, like I told you, I was not there when those arrests were, hap were happening. And that evening, whilst we were making their calls, I kept in the less men come. I can tell you, look, and I believe intelligence will have shown, that evening, if not a lot of the work that I did, by the next morning, there was going to be a massive demonstration, and we don't know how the demonstration will have been. Because it was on social media, they were massing up. I keep saying no. And I had to impromptu insert a house to house just to divert attention. No, no, we are going to do house to house at uh, Dukrum. Even when we had this pressure, I said no. I, I said no, no, we are still going to have the house to house. And we went and started and brought a lot of them. Then I said, look, now that I have enough of you, let's go to the office. All of you stay here. My instructions are don't go anywhere. Mm. We are going to the police regional command. We will inform you as and when it's necessary. But please, nobody should move. And I did that to divert attention from the massing up of let's go and demonstrate because you start the demonstration, it, it's not planned. You don't know where you may be going. And then before you realize, people are attacking innocent right. citizens. And, and we did all that. So Wasi has been a hot spot for a while. As a figurehead, essentially you're a figurehead, what, 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 do you do directly to diffuse the tension within the constituency? I have said it time and time again. I mean, for the until around this time, we have this small lead going on. So you have a lot of gatherings, and where, wherever I go, when I get the opportunity to speak, I keep telling them, look, the young men should not just follow us blindly because we are political heads. I have two adult children now. These two adult children that I have, they serve also as pooling agents. Anything that I ask you to go and do that is unlawful, simply just ask me, Honorable, you have your sons. Why not let them come and lead? I have brothers. I have 18 other siblings. One is dead. So 17 other siblings that we are from the same father. 17 others, myself, 18. The youngest is about uh, 28 now meaning that they are also matured enough to be able to lead this. Don't let me stand in public and tell you that let's not be violent, and then I come in the room, and then I try to arm you to go and do violent. Let no any other person also do the same. Because at the end of the day, if there's any benefit that counts with being a member of parliament, I and my family will be the first to test it. So Why will you follow me or follow any other politician when, when the power comes? Those who benefit from the taste of it, the first beneficiaries of it, are not on the front line. That's Let's a form of a moral suasion yes. on your so part. So I keep telling them, and I can bet you, with the number of things that have happened in my constituency, well, I always thank Allah for the mercies and the guidance, the kind of elders that we have. I can bet you it have erupted long ago. What about the state in on. general? What, what can we do beyond your personal activities? How can we control the activities within, within the area? Let the police and the security be lawful. You see, 
stay neutral. But they are being neutral. lawful and they you are, are not, not really agreeing with no, them. No, they are not. You see, I keep telling you, you cannot just send... Yesterday, the IGP tried to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, avoid the question that I asked. I didn't ask about sweeping in my office. I said you use anti-robbery units during the registration exercise. Are we going to get assurance from you? Every officer that will be patrolling the activity on election day will be in uniform with his name so that we can identify this is Muntaka, a police officer. He said yes, oh, but others will be at the background if it becomes necessary. You call them anti-robbery. Yes, if, it, if there's some robbery, we expect them to, to strike. But we don't expect to see them during uh, election activity. You know, so long as you continue to use these kind of people. Look, let me tell you. What happened in Alaba? I wasn't there because that day I was in New York. I was reliably informed a week today that when those young guys came there, everybody around thought they were there to robbery, police and to robbery, because they dressed like them. And that's what I kept saying. They were just like them. So they said that, look, for almost 15 minutes that this thing was going, the shootings, they really tried to was to robbery. Because Alaba is not an area where you can easily go and do robbery. Oh, no. And when these guys were going, people were rather opening way for them because they thought it was an um, anti-robbery unit. Why wouldn't their police on, with guns wear uniform? If you are an, a CID, who is supposed to pick intelligence? You are supposed to disguise yourself. You are not supposed to be holding guns, heavy weaponry, with plain cloth. No. Show me where this is done. On oh, no, diffusing tension within the constituency, some people have suggested that we completely ban political gatherings within your constituency. So how, you... how do we campaign? You can't do that because that will be unlawful. And we'll go to court to challenge It's them. a hotspot. The police have identified the, the hotspots. How many hotspots do you have? Over 6,000. So I'm saying that when you do that, then how, how are we going to campaign? Because there's a history of disturbances. Tell me. So and I tell you, you know, that whoever says that there are, there are history, and I tell the person it's a lie. I came to Parliament in 2005. Yes, there were gunshots. About seven people received gunshots in 2005. Go check the record from since that election, whether there had ever been a gunshot in my constituency. So you don't agree with limiting political gatherings going into no. 2020? No, what they should do. You see, all this, what is creating the suspicion and the tension is people seeing neutral, persons that are supposed to act neutral, acting partial. Let them stay neutral. Look. Draw the line. NDC crosses it, deal with it. MPP crosses it, deal with it. But don't make the whole thing look as if when one crosses the line, you are persuading that person. If the other one comes close to the line, not even crossing it, then you are brutal. You, you don't send the right signal. And then let all of us watch our utterances. Because, you see, I keep saying, trust me, what Aswansi Consensus has done for me, they've not done for any person. Check our records since independence. Everybody comes. Yes, some true coup details. One term, you are out. I'm the only one that have been elected, re-elected, re-elected. They have done so much for me. Oh, that no, the well, only way that I can do to honor them. And if they even decide that on their own will, Muntaka have had enough of you. I still owe them a thank you. Okay. But because when someone said. says that, I'm going to take it at all costs then you are going to subvent the will of those people. And that's where we will resist. Because I have a responsibility to protect their, 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 their will. There have been other suggestions about diffusing the tension, which you agree there is quite a lot of tension in Asawasi. Other people think we should gerrymander the constituency. What, what do you say to that? So that you, you destroy it? Well, They've um, done it before. Let me tell you. When we were at Square East, Alaba was part of us. Ejezongo was part of us. Apparently, they decided to dismember it so that NDC could not have a seat in Kumasi in 2004. So they took Alaba, if you could be, out of the constituency and took a Desongo out of the constituency. But they say they didn't know that, whereas, I mean, with the greater respect, even the ones that you call the elite in Desongo, I mean, do not keep one wise. Our religion and our culture allows us to have many children. For their shock, they realize that even when they did that, we still have the number. Because you see, doing that will be destroying the will and the possibility of the people getting their own to represent them. It's about representation. 
if you look at Kumasi and you look at the population of the Zongos, and you say you're going to do the constituency so that you will not even have a Zongo person representing the Zongo people, that would be too unfair to them. In fact, looking at Kumasi, I think that the Zongo should be having at least out of the 11 seats about three mm. because of the share population. But they've been dismembered already. So it's love only one. If that one, do you think you have to dismember it and then so that you, you, you but completely... But if it's an appropriate uh, intervention for these disturbances... Why? Do you know that the disturbances in Tafu? Grupuni was killed in Tafu. There are disturbances in Swami too. I mean, when NPP within their own, their own, shot, I mean, stab and kill a member of their own, does that mean that in that case you have to find a way of dismembering so that there will be no MPP in, in those areas? You don't, you don't do that. What you do is that try to be just. You see, it is said time again and again, the absence of war is not peace. Simply well, because there's no war, it doesn't mean you the, have the peace. The National Security Minister yesterday actually said there's peace in the country, but some people are trying to make it seem like there's no peace. Do you agree with him? Well, I mean, comparatively, if you compare us to our neighbors and other things, I mean, we should be grateful to God for what we have. But we need to consolidate it. We cannot take it for granted. And the only way you can consolidate it... Is I mean, it false alarm when some people make it seem like no, no, no. the country is it's, not peaceful? It's, no, it's not that people are making, uh, making false alarm. You see, the only way you'll be able to keep the peace is to listen to concerns of people. When people have concern, listen. Is it genuine? Is it sincere? Where it is sincere, act. Don't just brush it. Because it is the brushing aside that builds up the tea. I mean, I don't know you what they said. You listen to, the, you listen to uh, General Kwete. What are you saying? When people have, when people feel that they are being intimidated, people feel that the system, the police, the security forces are not being fair in their... So you don't agree the, with the security minister? I don't, no. I, listen to me. I keep saying that. Whatever he say is comparative. Because remember he was mentioning our sub-region, our neighbors. Yes, but check. Most of our neighbors had this got to where they are because they refuse to listen to people they claim. These are minorities, these are small people. And then it grew and then became a problem. And then I ask him, I will tell you, he and I talk a lot. Then I tell you that, look, there's this challenge, there's that challenge, and I send you everything, I send you pictures, and you don't act. Is that what you think is happening? Yes. You're not acting. I'm telling you. I just give you a simple example. I, member of parliament, write to IGP, raising concern, and you don't even respond. You're not acting on your concerns. I'm even saying that. Just even acknowledge the seats. That, oh, you've received this letter, but you are acting on it, or maybe you get back to me. No. Why even do you think only the NDC is making these complaints? Well, because of, it's obvious. The others are in bed with them. Because they are in bed with them. I mean, yesterday you saw it in the chamber. Our own colleagues were opposite, were screaming, oh, it is there, they have a problem. What, what signal does this send you? They are in bed. So, half of them, if they have a problem, because they are in bed, they talk over it on, on, on pillow. So it is they who have a problem. And they said yesterday in the chamber, and I just said, wow, if this is what it comes to, then you, look, let's take concerns being raised seriously. For example, 2008, Dr. Bala, a very close friend, was picked as a candidate for MPP. At that particular election, not even a single person received a slap in my constituency, not alone a hit. Anything I hear, I'll call him. But I'm, I'm here that people are, your guys are planning to do this. What? No, this cannot happen. Let me cross check and get back to you. And he'll be honest with me. But you are right. They were there, but I'm stopping them. He hears something, he calls me. Mudaka, I've heard this person is trying to do this and this. Oh, let me cross check. And I'll be sincere with them. Oh, when I cross check, it is true. But I'm assuring you, I'm going to stop it. We went that way hand in hand till the very end. Yes, he lost. He's the only candidate that contested me. And after the election, called to congratulate me that look, I mean, you give me, I, I'm sure I gave you a run for your money, but congratulations, you've won. Maybe your suspicion is based on something that has no relation to what you are leading your substitution to. Talking resolves this thing. And more communication. That's and, what you and, want. And I can tell you, look, the one contesting me, the MCE, 
the same person contested in 2016. And I checked from TV3, the interviews and the insults, the what have you. But when the election was over and he was appointed the MC, he went, the assemblyman rejected it. Everybody said, oh, we have to talk to Munteka. Well, I would say, look, for the sake of our community, we cannot continue to keep this division. We talked, he came to my office, spoke, I retaliated by going to his office, I visited him too, we spoke, agreed that look, we will keep civil and keep the communication channel and keep working together. Mm. When the time for election comes and my party nominates me as a candidate and your, your party also nominates me as a candidate, we can control the content, but we'll do it in a way that is very, very civil. In the Zongo, we respect each other by age. I'm older than you. This game, I've been in it for over uh, a decade and a half. There's a problem I call more than 10 times. You won't pick. I drove. I did not. So the and MC I will not believe no that you. you didn't see my missed call. Well, if you're choosing that you don't want us to talk, why will I want to talk to you? What's the relationship between you two? I don't have any relationship with him. Because with the greatest respect, he's not my age mate. We didn't grow up together. Oh, you can work together no, with no, people. No, no, no. Listen, you became the candidate. I mean, the first one didn't work out for you. You fortunately became MC. There's supposed to be some working relationship between the MP and the MC. I mean, you, you choose to abuse it. Understandably, I mean, a lot of them do it. But where I have never seen a call from him. Unless Maybe he I call hasn't him. had a need for you yet. Oh, yes. So we live in the same community. You are the MC, I'm the MP. You don't have a need for Have me. you tried to reach him on other occasions and I'm saying beyond that, I that have, incident? I have, I have several instances to point. Even memos that I've written to support people. No, I've no, found even the person... Want to talk to you? No, no, I, I don't know. Maybe he'll be the best person to answer this. Maybe he'll be the best person to answer this. So, well, so now we are in the campaigning mood. Then now people come and say that, oh, we want to put the two of you together. No, you can't put the two of us together. I don't like, I, I, I'm not a pretender. I don't pretend. I'm not the type that will want to s say something what in the public. What if he wants to, to the two of you no. to work together? No, I don't. Now, you, now you're the one no. who doesn't yes, want to Yes, I don't, because I have given you several opportunities. Right. And you've abused it. I cannot control being the Maybe person that will be abused. Maybe now he wants to smoke no, the peace pipe. And you're saying no. Let's all keep to the rule. The rules are well defined. CI 127 have defined clearly what can be done and what cannot be done. I think that is most important. Let us all keep to the rule. That's the absolute thing. If we all keep to the rule, I mean, I keep telling you, we don't need to be friends to work together. Right. If we all decide to be lawful and abide by the rules, nobody will hate the other. Some new security measures have been introduced, including the deployment of uh, uniformed security men during elections. Does this satisfactorily address some of the concerns you yeah, have? Yeah, I do. I believe it will. And my hope and prayer that they'll be firm and deal with anybody, whether NDC, MPP, who tries to, for, uh, what do you call it, go lawless. If you deploy them and they come, and some are being lawless, whether NDC or MPP, and they don't act, and yet are willing to act when the others are doing, they will be part of the problem. You, so you, all you, I keep saying is that remain professional. If you remain professional, everybody, I, Montega, try to be lawless, deal with me according to the law. Any other person tries to be lawless, deal with that person. Will you personally to the law. give up? Members of your party who are you see, it is not in, it is not it is not for me to decide whether to give up or not. When you infringe the law, the law is supposed to deal with you. It is not for any person to try to 
to, to, to stand between you and the law. No. Have Let you us... made this clear to your followers? I people have. Who support and you? you talk to them. And you... Sometimes go independent and talk to the people around my office, and they'll tell you. You go act lawless, and you see the other side of me. Because I keep repeating every time we have a meeting. I say, look, the only way we will remain victorious is to remain lawful. We will continue screaming about the injustice being meted out to us. We can continue screaming about the wrong things that is going on. We will have to remain lawful. If we decide to go lawless, then we will be like them. And that will be terrible for us. So we will remain lawful. And remember, being lawful is also to be able to defend myself. Right. Yes. What do you mean when you say to be able to no, defend yourself? No, the Constitution yourself? has defined clearly. You cannot slap me left, right, center. And so expect you me to just throw my if, Definitely. Uh, if there's anything Definitely. done against you. So I tell you that what keep if, your distance. What, what, what if someone does anything against you or your spot, all you have to do is call the police. Why retaliate? The police that will not act. Why, why don't you have any trust because in I've people? told you, I've written, I mean, instances. I mean, when Asante Mayim brought bus people, we got the teacher, we arrested the boy, we reported, nothing happened. Cars, we reported, nothing happened. We, I mean, and we, we write. And so then I sign myself. And you don't even get a response, whether from the EC or from the police. Let them remain neutral. If they do, it is going to help all of us. Because then, it will encourage all of us, especially those of us who have been insisting that our people should remain lawful, it will strengthen them to remain lawful. Honorable, hold the thought on elections within Asawasi. You're watching Spotlight. My name is Nuong Falom. We are discussing the Asawasi constituency with the member of parliament of Asawasi, Honorable Mohamed Mutaka Mubarak. He's also the minority chief whip. We'll go for a quick break. When we come back, Spotlight continues. Tally, welcome back to refreshing times at the bar. Be responsible, be safe. Always wear a face mask when going into any public place. Everywhere ABL products are served have a strict no mask, no entry policy. Everyone who serves you is required to wear a mask for your safety and theirs. While all necessary steps have been taken by the establishment, we rely on you to adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. Keep your distance. Avoid physical contact even while you enjoy yourself. Remember, when you cough, cough into your elbow or into a tissue and dispose of it immediately in the bins provided close by. Always wash your hands after. Wherever you enjoy club and other ABO products at home, or at the bar, be responsible. Drink responsibly. While you keep to all COVID safety tips, remember to stay alert. This message is brought to you by Accra Brewery Limited, producers of Ghana's original beer club. Hello, viewers. I'm feeling very frustrated in a board in Sambulai. I'm very happy. If you don't understand, don't worry, call me self, I don't understand. In this edition, Vodafone Ghana has now made it possible to send money from Vodafone Cash to all network free. We will cross over to our senior reporter for more details. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing in front of downtown. You know. Fifia, Matendo says, Jordan, you put your charges, Manomi. 
Cho, you bro, charge this on your womb low. I don't harm on you. I be a rich sense, do not harm. Charge this or clung down. I mean, I'm your friend, you know me. Is send a manica, charge this man, or charge this. I met G. Naka charge you say, you know, my name is Fanny BP. Oh, I'm a good fool. Oh, I'm a For me, I do a lot of online transactions. I think I see it. Oh, I'm a See, the excitement for me is that I get to save a lot on Vodafone cars. Please, put me down. I'm so excited. I can now send money to all networks without any charges. Me ye jedi ni ba. A bribe ye se se mi chia me juma ye fokam. Si ka mi chia se charges no. E do so do do. Me su se se di ye. Me da Vodafone cash a se. Sending money on Vodafone cash to all networks is now free. Send any amount of money as many times as you like to all networks for free. Dial star 110 hash now to send money. Any amount for masumo. This is the red news. Uh, apologize. The future is exciting. Ready? Welcome back to Spotlight on MX24, your home for fun, fearless, and factual content. We're still discussing Asawasi in the Ashanti region with the Member of Parliament for Asawasi, Alhaji Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak. Let's move into Parliament. Mm. Uh, you mentioned earlier you have a lot of duties mm. in, in Parliament, especially with your colleagues. Yeah. What, what is it like? Uh, with the uh, Speaker of Parliament? Is he supportive of your role as Minority Chief Whip? Well, let me say that, uh, I mean, the Professor is a nice person when it comes to the welfare of issues, uh, mm -hmm. MPs. I mean, I must admit, I've seen about four or five speakers since being in this house. I want to believe that I can't point any speaker that will surpass him when it comes to fighting for the welfare of MPs. And because the chief mm. whips... That was quite a good commendation. You, you think mean, he's been and because, the best so far uh, in working No, I'm not for saying that. The, I'm saying I don't see anybody who surpasses him. Who surpasses him? him. So, so yeah. far he's... So he's among the best who have treated, I mean, what, taking well concerns of welfare. welfare of MPs seriously. And because I'm whip who... Core Including function. minority MPs. That's what I'm saying. Because I'm whip and our core function is also welfare, I mean, I, I, on that score, I, I commend him a lot. The biggest problem we have is when there are difficulties. And you see, the mark of a, a very good speaker or presiding officer everywhere in the world is when the difficulty comes. What manner of difficulties? The difficulties come and the parties are polarized and you are supposed to remain in the middle to be able to see to the house having the discussion and ending. Neutrality. And you know, keeping your neutrality because you are a presiding officer without necessarily showing bias, sticking to the rules, which is our standing orders and the constitution, and allowing space. Because you see, one of the beauty of democracy everywhere in the world is that the majority usually will not want to say much. Because they are going to have their way, anyway. Whether it is voting, I mean, they are usually side on the side of government. So the majority will not have much. It's the minority or the opposition that will have so much to say. And that will have so much concern to point out. When you narrow the space for the minority or the opposition to air out their grievances and their issues and their concerns, you are not helping democracy. And this is where we have problem with him. You I think mean, he's not time, being neutral? 
and I'm, he's I'm, not I'm giving not the minority the enough floor, on the floor time and time again in, in our uh, what do you call it uh, enclave where I tell you, Mr. Speaker look just apply the rules okay let the rules manifest itself and he becomes jittery because look I came to this house to meet the like of J.H. Mensah and I'll give you just one example that I would discard the damn parliament. There was an issue and the judge Mensah stood on his feet. I went to my dinner and came back and he was still on his feet. More than one and a half hours, he was giving space to churn out his concerns. Okay. You have Harun Ejusu as the minority leader and the speaker said you have five minutes. What? I mean, so the minority leader have five minutes. So and you the speaker not you, you, time. You, 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 you have with, with the greater respect for, uh, the, 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 for lack of better uh, words to use, the speaker get the cut to cut the minority that was speaking. I've never seen this anywhere. I mean, I've been majority whip. You think that's with deliberate? With Dua and Che Mensa. And he says, uh, so minority, uh, how many more minutes do you think you need to finish this? Indicating to him that, oh, you've taken so much time already. Then the minority said, oh, Oh, I've just barely started speaking. Okay, okay, let's see in 10 minutes. He'll go 15 minutes. Say, well, man, until then, I'm just right. The last time you said in 10 minutes, mm -hmm. we'll pass 15 minutes. How many more time do you think you still need to finish this your submission? In a way, that reminding the man that, look, please, time is of also essence. But you don't just take the mic off. The minority leader, and it has happened. Sometimes, man, until they'll be outstanding. Myself, standing, the front bench. No, he won't call because you think this that's is, deliberate. That's deliberate. It's deliberate everywhere in, in the world. Look, cite any example, and I'll tell you. Once any front bencher is up, speaker calls the person because he needs to hear you. So when there are controversial and if issues, for time? it's not about pressing for time. The issue that you are discussing is that's the reason why we are here. The chamber is a debating chamber. It is not a passage chamber. It's not a place where you just rubber stamp things. It is a place for debate. It is the chaos that's supposed to happen in the lorry station. That could lead to a fight and blood. That has been turned into an organized chamber. So if you take away debate from the chamber, you are destroying democracy. And this is the concern that we have. Believe me, when the issue is not controversial, oh, he's a fantastic person. But the moment the issue is controversial, oh my goodness, and then you are mentioning the president and how terrible the action. Oh my goodness! The speaker becomes jittery. He can't sit. Maybe he wants you're to end it. Allegations that are not possible the to substantiate. Rules, so. The rules helps him. Our rules. Look, the standing orders is very elaborate. If I say anything that is not supposed, that is you. There are counter rules that you can say. That, oh, I'm reminding you of rule this. Mm. Mm. So if you are saying this, can you provide me the evidence? I get in it. And one thing that he does, and I've told him, I said, Mr. Speaker, if you're not careful, you go down in the record of this house as the West Speaker for only chamber operation. Because where somebody says something, then you say that, expand it from the records. I said, look, the official records of every parliament is not meant, for lack of better uh, word, it's not meant for only good things to be said. Sometimes it allows people in future to look back and say that, ah, I really wish I didn't say this. To guide the current MPs that such utterances on the floor is not helpful. So whether you perceive it to be bad or good, it's not for you to expound it. It is for you to use our standing orders to say that the person, another member can get out and say, Mr. Speaker, the way a colleague and his words are, I think he should no longer be heard. And you put it to vote. And then you say the person will no longer be heard. That is within the rules. Okay. But to say, expand it. And minority that will speak and say, expand it from the record. I mean, it sends our adrenaline. What about the majority high. leader? Is he cooperative? <laughs> well, so I, I've said a number of things and he's complained. I think that, look, he's not being fair because you, are, you have a discussion with him. You agree on something. You go, and then he changes his mind. Yeah, I mean, everybody can change his mind. But once we agree on something, you are supposed to hold it as sacred. 
And I can tell you, and I've told him in his, in, on his face, that he's not running the house well. Oh my because God. I've been on the majority side, so I know what I'm talking about. You see, running a house is very difficult. I mean, yeah. let me tell you an example of running a house. Trying to wake up somebody who's pretending to sleep. That's how difficult it is to run the house. You are trying to carry the weakest person behind, along. You are trying to make room. Sometimes it's so provocative, but you, you manage to carry people along. So that when times of difficulty comes and you talk, they listen. But when you want to bless everybody and say, oh, we have our numbers. Oh, man, you can go. We, we don't care. I mean, fine. Then you are also helping to make the house, governing of the house, very difficult. Then you have a minority that says, well, we will not cooperate. We can't stop government business, but we are not going to find it easy. And I can tell you, I've told him, I said, look, parliament is not only about just passing government business. People are learning. You need to bring them along. People disagree. You need to carry them along. So that's why I give you an example, like trying to wake up people who are pretending to sleep. Mm. How difficult it is. That's how difficult it is. Because remember, they are your everybody in the chamber, we are colleagues. Whether the person is a first timer or eighth timer, we are all colleagues. We defer to each other out of respect and what have you. So majority of that, in my view, is doing his best by every standard. If you want to ask me, and I've said this in Kumasi Radio, he's a very good MP. You can never take that one away from him. As a leader of the house, no. I have told him on this face, he's not running the house well. Because he runs the house only on one oh, leg. No, but you've been in parliament for 16 years. Yes. Why should the people of Asawasi vote for you again? I've remained trustworthy. I have managed to, by the grace of God, put Aswansi where it's supposed to be. I mean, you, you have specific interventions that have oh, been done? I mean, if we are going to talk about that, it will take us a whole Give us one. I mean, I can tell you that one of the things that I pride myself and always thank God is that when I came, my people, well, not the people that take education seriously. Mm. Today, after a decade and a half, every child in my country goes to school. Now, our major challenge is how to get everybody to finish How can school. we attribute that to you? What's the link? Oh, yeah. I mean, they will tell you. I came and most of the infrastructure was bad. I mean, you know, okay. the education of our, infrastructure? Yes, education infrastructure, our Macaranta were in wooden structures. Thank God, turn all of them to block so that they have decent place to sit. I mean, I'm built like When you say education, I'm is this just Macaranta or beyond that? No, beyond education? that. I mean, you have e-block, you have secondary schools that have been built. I mean, you have ICT centers that have been built. I mean, you have so many things, scholarships that have been given to the needy to encourage people to go to school. I mean, support a, a lot of needy fiscally challenged person to be able to, to also catch up with their education. A lot have been done in terms of education. And for me, that's what I always thank God. Even the one you go to Kumasi, what people will tell you about Muntaka is more about the physical infrastructure, the roads, the street lights, those things. Uh, the people will say, oh, Aswansi was one of the most deplorable places. And now they call it that the Zongo without dust. I mean, <laughs> thank God, through my effort, all this has been done. But I cherish more the non-tangible, which is today I have a lot of people that go to school. And yes, we still have dropouts. People finish the SS, they don't continue to SS. People finish SS, they don't continue. There's we are working so hard. quite a yeah. high unemployment still within, uh, so among the youth. Heavy. What are you doing about that? I mean, some of the things that I've been doing, for example, those who really want to learn something on their own is for the past close six years is the where we've been putting a lot of emphasis so you get a master uh, artisan who agreed to pick three four then you buy the tools and when the person passes out you get the person so the not tools just formal education you're no, no, focusing no. on yes, the technical very. and you go to my concert and you have the garment association will tell you you have the shoemakers who will tell you you have the headdresses we are doing all this to make sure that we don't have too many idle hands. Believe me, even the graduates, graduate employment that is unemployment that is affecting the whole country is also affecting us. And I remember recently a lady came and I was so sad when she said, Honorable, it is through you that my parents insisted I should go to school. I finished UDS, no job. And now they are wondering whether my going to school is useful. I mean, that really, really, really hurt me. I said, Hello, my sister, believe me. You're going to school is better than not being to school. Yes, I know the challenge, 
of uh, graduate unemployment is hitting all of us on the face. I really wish I had a place where I could just say, go and work. But for now, let's think, what can you be doing on your own that I can support you to do? And interestingly, interestingly, this lady, she sells, there's a popular drink in my place, this uh, hibiscus drink. People take it a lot. So during weddings and adorings, she supplies it. Soboro. Soboro, very well. And I asked her, so you do that, what is the middle stumbling block? She said, refrigeration. I said, mm. go look for refrigeration and I'll support you. And I'm happy I was able to support her to buy the refrigeration so that she could do it on a larger scale and be able to supply. Even though she's a graduate, she's willing to do something on her own. And I'm inquiring a lot of my other siblings who are graduates and are still looking for a job. Find something to do instead of not doing anything. Myself, even at time. It wasn't just easy that the moment you finish school, the next you day get you get it. I started something. It takes it's a grown while into for a everyone. But it takes some time. Once you are looking, don't just sit and idle and say, because I'm a graduate, I won't do anything apart from getting for my employment. And I always tell them this. So what? Did you and buy always, the fridge for her? Yes, I did. There are other business women like her within the constituency yes. who are facing capital challenges. Well, you can't uh, give money into no, no, the no, business for no. all of them. What can you what do? What I've done, I mean, with the women, if you ask Prudential Bank, they'll tell you. You know, my community, one of the biggest challenges we have is that because we are Muslims, we don't like taking loans that have, comes with interest. Because it's, it's against our, our okay. faith. But so, it's Islamic banking. So I spoke to Prudential and said, look, I have this team of women. I want them to be assisted. Because I've tried a number of times where you give the money to them to rotate and then some few people squander the money and because mm. they are a political actor, you can't do anything. So they agreed. So I deposit money so that all the interest will be taken from down my money. And then in case somebody default genuinely, that will also be taken from the money that I deposited. And they send it this But money. that's at a personal cost to you. The, Oh, yes, because, I mean... How would you finance that, Honorable? My sister, the, the salary I mean, of an MP is not... It's not, it's not only... Sorry, because I can tell you for sure. This one, when I wanted to do it, I did from... When I just picked my s gasha and I decided to pick a chunk of it to do, to do that. Then, okay. And that has hung on to help a lot of other women through Prudential Bank where they pick and they are paying in peanuts. But I, what I, I keep saying is that even within the common fund itself, I have assisted others. But you see, the common fund itself is not much. As I said, my constituency, the population over 400,000, that's a very dense population that area. Remember, I mean, antecedent of deep, deep, deep poverty. So 16 years of intervention. You might have helped some people, managed to get them to go to school. What about those that couldn't, the net couldn't catch? Mm. You have to still deal with that. You cannot say that, oh, because the, you, you, you fell outside the net, that's it. You can't benefit from anywhere. So we still do it. So like I'll tell you, if you go the hairdressers, what I'm encouraging the, a lot of the groupings to do, register, have the bank accounts, have a TIN number, all the necessary, do a business plan. I have people that assist them to do a business plan. Then when you, uh, you've done all this and show clearly the path, how you are going to assist your team or your group, then I extend money. And I can tell you, people who, who prepare hide, in my place, we prepare hide for schools who do mm, leather work. Mm, mm. I've assisted them with a capital that they rotate among themselves. I've assisted uh, hairdressers with capital among themselves. I've assisted, but these ones are true common fund. I've assisted the dressmakers through the common fund to help among themselves. So into my next four years, if by the grace of God, the people, uh, Aswansi people, continue to elect me, I will be doing more of this because I have seen that it's been useful because with a shoemaker, uh, there's mm. a, a shoe a leather guy who does beautiful shoes. I mean, almost all the shoes that you see in the world. But 16 years, some people think you've been in there for long. Others think you need to give way for a new person. Yes, what do you they think? They say this, and I, I said, uh, look, we're in Kumasi. How can Chairman be there and then be asking me about how long I've kept it? I've it's kept not the only example. Oh. There are others who've been there. No, I'm you? saying that we are, I'm from Kumasi. Mm. So Kumasi, the Kumasi family. I mean, so is it he, a Kumasi thing or? No, I'm saying that I'm de, I'm de, I don't want to take people far away. Okay. And I said that if you come to the Kumasi family, oh, I have a neighbor who has done 24 years. And you're not asking that he has kept too long. He's still going. Are you grooming a successor? Obviously. I have a lot of young guys that I'm bringing up. Is there one I mean, particular stellar no, one that I mean, you That would be dangerous okay. to do. Because you see, you have a lot of teenage guys that have been working with me for years. 
And I keep telling them, look, all I'm doing is to bring you guys up. Some of you can be ministers, some of you can be MPs, some of you can be MCs, some of you can be even CEOs. So even some of them are working, but when they close, some will tell them, oh, I have three hours every day that I can volunteer. So I keep grooming a lot of these guys, hoping that one day when I'm, I mean, by the grace of God, said, that, oh, I've had enough of this, or maybe I move higher up or something happens and I'm no longer the MP, there'll be more than enough qualified person who, because, I can tell you, it is not just being the MP. Having the right people surrounding you, mm. advice, ready to do the legwork, ready to identify the challenges, to bring it on table, discuss and agree on even how to handle it. It's right. more useful than just being the figurehead MP. So having all these teams working together is a very good thing. And I know, I mean, I have more than 30 of them. Some people wanted Masawood Mubarak to contest with you. In fact, they threatened to vote against the NDC when he was disqualified. I have a lot of young guys I'm grooming. And these ones, I'm sure, when, I'm, when I step out, they'll be more than happy to step in and, and work and make the... As much Honourable, why are you dodging my, my, my question? Uh, Honourable, your opponents claim that Asawasi is going to the MPP in, in this election. How many times have they not heard that? This time they're determined. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Do it. Think lawful. Or lawful, forget it. You can't. Oh, you think there's no lawful way of taking... No. The, the lawful, of NDC, I'm, saying that, their I'm saying that lawful... I'll thank the people of Asawasi. They've given me a lot of opportunity. I'll thank them. You think the MPP can take Asawasi in 2020? No, they can't. What have they done in the last four years in Asawasi? Look, check in Asawasi. One single drain has not been added since the four years. Even contract that we awarded, like Sipere, Timpoma, Asoko, Mopong, their own backyard, where you, they will vote 700 and I get 20. We start projects. They come, they terminate. What, about what are you going to tell the people there? And you, you can now see a lot of skirt and blouse resonating from those areas. So, oh, honorable, we thought you were not one of us. And we thought we are we are traditional MPP. You think we've been no our, our, our own have abandoned us. Since you left, nothing has been added. Since your government lost power, nothing has been added in Honorable, would there be skirt and blouse in Asawasi in 2020? I know. No, I mean, it's only two candidates that are standing. But I expect a lot of MPP guys to vote for me. And I'm sure you see it during the election. Oh, you think even MPP guys will vote for you? A lot of MPP you? guys are going to vote for me. Because what about they've for, seen the difference between the, 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 the What two. about former President Mahama? You think he stands a chance in 2020? Definitely. Why? I mean, I mean just tell me. Tell me what they are, these guys are doing right. It is all about slogan. It's all about the greater respect, deception. I mean, you put a tracker and people are tracking and then they go and stand this tracker that is not here. Then you pull it off and then you try to put another, then they go and say, ah, this one is not here, then you pull it out. What kind of thing is this? But Our Imani democracy. has scored them 56.7%. That's more than half. <laughs> Do you agree with Imani's scorecard? Well, I've not seen the details of what Imani uh, used. I mean, if you want to score a government, it's a range of things, from corruption to their performance to how they are handling the media, the freedom of people's people to be able to express themselves. How do you score them? Order. There's no way these people can pass 50 marks. There's no way. Give us a, a, a percentage. Look, someone tells you that the money is here. We don't need to collect loans. And that person has taken far more than they ever came to meet. What, you come and meet 120 billion, and we are now crossing 260. And you cannot even pinpoint exactly some of the things that you use the money for. How would for. you score the NPP? I'm saying that I won't score them more than 40%. Right. Honorable, during your term as sports minister, what was the highlight for you? Well, I didn't stay there long. So I, I would say that it was so brief. It's just sad that the way they...